So, on to... Personal news. Personal news, yeah. Well, for a given value of personal. We're and gonna... news. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even more. We're going to talk about Podcasts games. We want to talk about games we've been playing, what we've been doing, and what we've been making lately. Yeah. So, let's start with what we've been playing. You talked about the Itch Bundle. Oh, yeah. So What are some of the things that you found in there, Claire? I found three things I want to talk about here. I will talk about... I'll talk about my... The, the big one first. Astrologaster. Astrologaster so, is great. Yeah, my brother told me, Oh, Claire, there's Astrologaster in that bundle. You really need to play it. You will love it. And guess what? I love it. It's... Oh, my God. How do I describe it? It's set in Shakespeare's time. Queen Elizabeth the first time you play Simon Foreman a astrologer physician so you basically are a doctor who diagnoses and heals people with the zodiac and that is so me I cannot even begin to tell you I'm actually mm, secret secret writing a game that uses astrology as a very important mechanic. <laughs> More on that later. More on that later. Much, much later, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, this is not going to be the next project. Or oh, no. Not even the one after that. No, so. not even that. Um, yeah, so Astrologaster. And, and, and you have... It's basically like a visual novel of, yeah, do you choose to tell your patient that uh, uh, there's something in Scorpio, which means they have a venereal disease, or it's in Aries, ruler of the throat. It's something, something's wrong with their throat. Um, The decisions are basically arbitrary each time. Basically, yeah. I mean, sometimes as a modern person, you will recognize the symptoms of a disease and you will be able to make the correct decision because you know science because you live in the 21st century. Quite often you're deciding what you want to tell the person based on what you think they want to hear. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's so much of what astrology is about, right? But the thing is, the thing is, the game is fully voice acted, so that's awesome. It's full of jokes and the art is gorgeous the art is like a pop-up book and you actually have to drag the page across like you're opening a pop-up book it's so beautiful but my favorite thing about this game is that at the start of each chapter sung in a madrigal style like actually period proper singing is this little song introducing each character, and it's so They're funny. They're always really tongue-in-cheek. Really, and yeah. Funny, and there's some really fun characters that you get to meet as well. Oh yeah, and you they... you feel like you feel like you're having a personal relationship with each of them. Like every time Mary Payne shows up, oh, I'm Mary. like, good God, not this woman again. Ugh. Simon Foreman is a terrible character. Oh, he's such a bad human being, but, but... I love him. <laughs> we we. He's a if... wonderful mix of. <laughs> Well-meaning and competent, and terrible person without any ethical standards. We've been playing over our dinners and breakfasts and stuff. It's basically like a soap opera for us. It's so good. It's a wonderful game. It's highly recommended. Yeah. So the second big recommendation I have out of that... And look, I have barely scraped the surface of this bundle, okay? Like I said... There's like 1,500 things in this bundle, okay? So uh, if you got the bundle and you haven't really played around yet, you will be set for life. Seriously. So the second thing I really like... thing I understand is quite good is this game called Prince of Cats. Oh, oh, I wonder (laughs) who wrote that. Um, No, my my next favourite thing, and I've only checked it out because it's it's very short, um, but you can play it for free. I think you can even play it if you didn't get the bundle. It is a sort of short story, interactive story. It's almost like a like a lone wolf or finding fantasy, like a pick a path thing, mm-hmm. right? Called Draw Nine. It's written in the Twine gaming engine, which is a very very easy to use engine. I have used it myself. I made a game called Nightlight earlier this year, and it's basically an engine for telling pick a path stories. It's so. Uh, basically, you're a mage leaving the mage tower to go on like your big quest, your first quest, and the the head of the tower gives you nine cards out of a deck, and you're sent on your way, and you have to deal with the problems that you run into with these cards, 
and it's got a very old school feel it's very atmospheric there's always like this sort of element of like you know you've got these cards but what do they really mean what do my choices mean when I when I pick them and it was just a lovely little thing for me to play on a Saturday afternoon and I played it for I played it through a couple of times because I wanted to know oh what happens if I come to this decision point but I play a different card so that was really fun and the last thing I'm going to recommend for now from that bundle, I may come back to it the next time we do a podcast, The Desktop Goose. Not a game. Not a game. I, of course, highly recommend the Untitled Goose game as a game, but I'm surely, sure surely you you've heard of this. this by now. It was the biggest meme at the end of last year. The Desktop Goose puts a very similar but trademark distinct goose on your desktop and it will drag windows onto your desktop of goose memes and notepads with notes from the goose and it will it will chase off. your mouse around if you click it or if you click off one of its windows it will chase your mouse around until it grabs it and 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 you will lose control of your cursor it will walk off screen and then walk back on tr- um, trotting muddy footprints across your screen it's so charming, and I'm very, very tempted to install it on my mum's computer and not how to t- not tell her how to turn it off. I'm very tempted to do don't this. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't know, man. That goose. It, uh, <laughs> it it's whispering in my ear. Anyway, so uh, meanwhile, for tabletop games. During the lockdown that we had recently, our local gaming store, King of Cards, who come with a very high recommendation if you're in Auckland they're well worth checking out uh they ran a number of deals on Facebook for various board games uh so that they could keep the company afloat and keep paying all their staff so we thought this was a great time for us to pick up a few new games at a good price and also it's like a public service really keeping king of cards going we got a small pile and we have been playing Takenoko a lot oh yeah so you can see we are up with the times because this is a, uh, you know, the cutting edge brand new game from what, over 10 years ago now? No way. Are you serious? Is it really that old? It's about that old. I feel like I remember when it came out. Oh my God. Oh, I It feel might so be old. seven years old. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's old. It's old. But it's wonderful. So it's a game in which you have a garden with a panda in it. And so You're growing bamboo for the panda to eat. You uh, develop new sections of the garden. You grow bamboo, and then the panda runs around and eats bamboo chaotically, and it's quite relaxing and zen in a way. Yeah, yeah, I love Just it. Just watching all the bamboo growing, and then watching this little hungry panda running around. So it's a lot of fun. We really recommend that. What's your tabletop recommendation? And my tabletop recommendation. Uh, I've been playing a lot of. Dungeons and Dragons lately, as I've said, trying to finish off some games. But what I've been getting into recently uh, is Glorantha, which is Greg Stafford's gaming world that he created back in the 1970s. See what I mean about us with the latest, very oh, latest of gaming are, news yeah, and recommendations? Right on that cutting edge. Yeah. So Glorantha is a world which is... The physics in the world is mythology. Cool. Things don't happen because of science. Things happen because in the dawn time, a certain myth happened and now they will always happen in that way. And so this is a game that really, uh, this is a world that really engages with ideas of culture and belief and what it means to be part of a particular community or a different community. Uh, It's also a world that can be very tongue-in-cheek in times which is fun, but it can also be very serious at other times. It's most uh, famously the role-playing game for it is RuneQuest, which back in the day was the major competition to Dungeons & Dragons. Ah. And has recently been re-released in a new edition. We are slightly more narrative people rather than rules-crunchy people, and so over the lockdown I picked up a copy of HeroQuest, which is another game set in the same world, not to be confused with the... um, the board game with all the little plastic pieces that came back out back in the day. Hero Quest is a more narrative game set in the same world. I've been reading through that, and I've been reading through some of the fiction that ties into it, and we had a try at playing the computer game that's set in the world, King of Dragon Pass, 
and the board game Khan of Khans, which is in the same world. And it's just, it's a really, really deep world with so much lore and information and culture. Every single time I read it, I find something new and amazing mm. that's just hilarious and fascinating and interesting. Cats used to be able to breathe fire, <laughs> but in a myth that I haven't managed to track down yet, the dogs in the spirit time stole that ability from the cats. Huh. My favourite thing in it, it has the ducks, who are tragic berserker warriors, cursed by the sun itself, striving in a ceaseless battle against the living dead, and against the fact that whenever anybody else sees them, they go, oh, look at the widow duckies! Oh. And so they're grim, humourless berserkers that the rest of the world thinks is just a massive joke. The ducks got cursed by the sun that they can never fly, and so if a duck were to get in a hot air balloon, the hot air balloon would immediately crash. Oh. If they were to get on a uh, flying mount, the flying mount would immediately crash, because it has been decreed by myth that they cannot fly. That's brutal. And one of the coolest things about RuneQuest is that you your characters can interact with the myths of the world by ritually reenacting them and then entering the god time. And depending on what you do, if you are a sufficiently amazing character, you can change reality by changing the myths. Hmm. And so this would be an incredibly high-level game. I love the idea of having a game where the ducks set out to reclaim the ability to fly. That would be really cool. I'd be interested in playing that.